Jeff. I'm Charlie. And this is uh, Bourbon and Bowls. It sure is. Uh, Beth is missing. Um, well, we just kicked her out. Yeah, bye-bye. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> no, she'll be with us next week. Um, uh, real quick, before we get uh, too far into this, uh, and I appreciate all the viewers here, uh, I will want to welcome Jeff to permanently to our Bourbon and Balls staff. Staff, like we fucking pay them. Um, uh, Bob's going to take a little bit of a break. Uh, this is not one of those things where the band breaks up and, oh. um, you yeah. know, it's uh, one of those uh, drama stories. But, right. um, you know, uh, this this is when Bob and I started this, uh, you know, we did this for a hobby. And it's still a hobby. Um, but, you know, life uh, events happen and things need to be uh, prioritized. And um, why we definitely appreciate that. Yeah. Um, uh, we now have Jeff. Uh, to kind of uh, help us move along and move forward with this channel and hopefully you guys uh, like the perspective that he brings uh, so. What real quick we didn't even talk about this before what what is your what's your what's your background here now that we have you here uh, on a regular basis as far as my work background or my yeah. work, well, well we don't know what we don't want to know about your work background we want we want to keep that as a uh, okay as a hidden thing um, but um, yes go ahead my uh, my bourbon background um, I got into it probably like a lot of people right around the pandemic. So, I mean, okay. I was already had some of it, but yeah. uh, really got into it during that time. And um, I, I like to collect some bottles, but most I open and, and sip and share. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Uh, I'm of the same attitude. Uh, yeah. Do you notice all the way up here? I know we have a nice collection behind us, but uh, if you look close enough, there are pretty much 95% of them are open and if it's not it's either because it's a backup bottle right. uh, or maybe we haven't got to yet uh, right. on, a, on a bottle review but uh, I'm of the opinion it, there's always gonna be more bourbon I don't mean sound cliche it's like that uh, a documentary neat right yeah. yes yeah. but it's true there's always gonna be more bourbon um, I think the whole point is to uh, share it with uh, people that are around you I think the right. experience is, uh, which we'll talk about that here after uh, this blind here. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned for that. And we're actually going to talk about our 12 bottle blind. Uh, blind. Uh, and we're going to tell you a little bit about it. You're going to be shocked as far as what came in last place, oh right? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, so stay tuned Blow for that. Away. Yeah, stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, Jeff, what do we have here? Um, well, let's see, to start us off, we've got uh, Sagamore Spirit. Um, this so what is the rye? Or I'm sorry, what's the uh, theme here? This is it's a rye theme tonight. Um, I'm kind of a rye guy. I've got quite a few bottles. Um, <laughs> um, didn't really get into this until uh, I went to a tasting about a year ago at Cincinnati Distilling. Okay. And that's what got me on on the rye kick. Okay. Uh, but this is uh, Sagamore Spirit. If anybody knows about this, this is a 83 proof uh, out of Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Um, they have uh, several different, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, expressions. Fish. Yeah, I have a sherry ca cask yeah. finish. Yeah, they got uh, a sherry cask. They have a cask strength. They've got a, a double oak. Double oak is phenomenal. Um, and they also have a, a distiller select bottle that was uh, aged in tequila barrels. Ooh. And that is phenomenal. Which, by the way, I have a... Uh... You did? Yeah, look at that. That is a, uh, <coughs> a WLW? Yeah. Ah. So one day we'll do a, a thing. I have a tequila uh, yeah. finished in a WLW, uh, William LaRue Weller bottle. Yeah, uh, I, I am not a tequila person okay. at all. Anybody that knows me, years ago I drank too much tequila, sipping at a little bar I was DJing at. And um, yeah, I was drunk for a while. Okay. <laughs> and the smell and the taste of tequila just sets me off. But when I tried oh, okay. the... the Bourbon air yeah. aged tequila, you can't tell the difference. It tastes like you're sipping bourbon. Really? There's a little bit of a hint of tequila, okay. but it, it tastes just like really? a bourbon. Yeah. All right. Well, I can't was wait. amazed. We'll do a bottle review down here in the road. We got a few bottles to get through before we get to it. Yeah. Uh, but right here, we got a rye. So go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So the second bottle here is Cincinnati Distilling. Uh, they are uh, um, basically out of, out of Milford. Okay. Um, yeah. They, uh, they're they local. It's, um, let's see, who is the. Parent, they own Fig Leaf Brewery. If anybody knows who that oh, is, oh, they do. I didn't know that. Yeah, um, I can't think of their parent uh, company, but uh, so I would go to March first. You go to March. That's it. March first. Okay, that's their parent company. Yes, that's okay. the parent company. March first. Um, they own that's a, that's a brewery uh, in here in Cincinnati. Yeah, yep, in uh, around Fields Hurdle area, I believe. Yeah, yep. Um, 
Third bottle we have. Um, and you guys are starting to know this brand, by the way. Yeah. We've, we've mentioned this quite a few times now. It's almost like our, I would say our Magnolia, but we're mentioning it just as much as. Yeah, because this this is good, guys. This is uh, A.M. Scott's out of Troy. Um, this is this is their rye expression. They have others as well, but okay. uh, they have a honey barrel. Oh, oh my, my. I, I just had that uh, at our live stream. Yeah. Yes, uh, so Jeff's going to hook me up uh, <laughs> with the guy up there. Who 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 runs that up there, or who uh, helps uh, run that up there? You my got, you my got buddy's it. name is uh, Philip. Okay, so um, Philip, shout out to you for uh, hooking me up for with the honey bear, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, but uh, A.M. Scott, we've done, uh, uh, it, it's the last few weeks, we've we've really uh, hung on to them. Uh, yeah. There, something's going on in Troy, Ohio. Oh, yeah. You got Hainer up there. You got Indian Creek. Um, yeah, they're... I don't know if it's in the water or what it is. Okay. All right. Very good. <laughs> it is good. And then um, the unicorn of the bunch here is uh, Penelope uh, Takaji. It is a, a rye. This is 106 proof, aged eight years. Okay. And this is very good as well. All right. And then so. my experiences with rye is, is limited. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I'll have my um, burr ryes a lot. Um, but like rise itself, um, well, shoot, we had a rye last week. We didn't even know it. <laughs> didn't you? Um, yeah. but, um, yeah. you know, I'm very interested, uh, in, uh, tasting other things other than just bourbon. Mm -hmm. uh, I know what I don't like. I don't like scotches, but this is not too all, this is not too far off the no. beaten pat. Uh, one thing I learned about rye though, uh, last week is I listened to, uh, one of the shows is, uh, someone asked whether or not rye the way you make rye is regulated in the world and is not, mm, not like no, bourbon is. No. However, uh, the United States, they do do it the same way they do bourbon. They do yeah. it in new uh, white oak barrels, right. but uh, there's nothing to say that another company in Europe can make whatever they want. They can put it in used uh, oak barrels right. and still call it a rye. Right. Yep, and and the age statements on them, if there is any. I mean, this is an age eight years, but usually they're they're young, two year. Okay. You know, sometimes a year. I wonder years. if it's because the 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 uh, the taste of the rye can overtake the youngness of the barrel, or the youngness of the bourbon. Therefore, you don't have to have right. uh, like a 10, 15 year old rye. Right. You'd be just as well to have a, like a four or five year old rye. It'll taste just the same or similar, just because uh, the youth of it will go away because it'll be overcompensated with the rye. Would you think? Yeah, yeah. And and the thing with the rye is, you know, everybody's misconception with the rye is it's always hot, it's always spicy. And that's what I that's why I wouldn't drink it because I didn't I didn't like a real okay. spicy type bourbon. Okay, know? okay. Um, but it's all about and what the guy down Cincinnati Distilling told me is it's it it's all about the corn. Corn and rye together make it spice. Oh, okay. Yeah. The less corn, and in this case, in Cincinnati distilling, it is 95% rye, 5% uh, malt. So in theory, it should in not theory. be as spicy. Right, in theory. And it, it, this one drinks, in my opinion, very smooth. Okay, it, so it, if I had a one, like a 51% corn, and it, like we had last week. Right. The 49% rye, spicy, right. it was very spicy, and we were complaining that it drunk it drank hotter right. than the proof, and we were all concentrating on the proof. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's how hot it was, and right. actually, it was actually the rice. So, yeah, um, that's it, good to know. It all like that's what he said. It all goes to how much corn, if any, is in it, and that's what sets off the spice. Interesting. All yeah. right. Well, so, we're not going to blind this. Uh, we know no. what each one is, uh, but we're kind of just going to give you our opinions on each one of them, yeah. and and kind of just because this is kind of our introduction to rye, anyways, uh, yeah. and then maybe oh wheat. <laughs> We have a rye blind for you all uh, yeah. here in a few weeks. My God, uh, um, uh, I, I won't even. I won't. Even, I don't know if he wants me to say his name yet. So, well, if he does, I'll mention it on the next show. But it was the biggest sample I've ever seen in my entire life. How big was that sucker? <laughs> Go get it real quick. I know he's going off camera, um, but I we got to show it to you. And this is a preview of what to expect. Uh, here in a few weeks, we're going to do a rye blind. So this is what normally a, a sample is. You send it to your buddies and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is what this is what normally you, you know you get, and that's pretty cool. Yeah. This individual sends us this. Look at that. He's like, here you go. Here's your sample. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. That's that's uh 
That's more than a handshake. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wait for Beth to get back and we'll wait for all three of us to get back. This is gonna be mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. Uh, here next week, I think uh, you're uh, out. I'm out, and then here the week after that, uh, you're out. So in a few more weeks, we'll get the band back together. And once yeah. we do, we'll uh, we'll do that one. Yeah. But I can't wait. I don't even know what this is. He ha he has it in an envelope. Uh, so we'll find out. Yeah, I think there's number one, number two on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. good God, that is the biggest. <laughs> Yeah. Jesus, dude, you like gave me gave it the Costco size. <laughs> yeah. Good God! So, all right, we'll try that here in a few weeks. But <clears throat> nevertheless, uh, glass A, we know it to be Sagamore. Right. All Sagamore right. spirits, eighty-five proof, I think it was. Okay, and I'll put something on the sidebar. Okay. All right. Is like Beth. Was yeah, it? she's like looking for the sidebar. No. That's why she's not here. Yeah, yeah. yeah we finally <laughs> we got we got we're we're done with her shenanigans. So, ah. Uh. <laughs> It does, it does definitely have a, yeah, you could, you could tell the rise in there. Yeah. It's almost like a, uh, I would say pumpernickel, but it's one of those like rye breads mm -hmm. that uh, that you get, the seeded. Yep, yep. That's what, that's what it smells like. You see how the nose, I mean, you do get a little bit of that, you can feel that little, the little alcohol yeah, yeah. burn. but you don't get it now. You don't get it now, that's a drink. No, it's um. Man, that might be, and I haven't had all the rice, so mm -hmm. I don't have a lot, a lot that's compare it to. But I'd almost say this is probably one of the milkiest yeah. uh, rice. This is smooth. It is so smooth. to your point, uh, I don't know how much corn this thing has in it, um, but that is a smooth rye. Uh, see, this is age four to six years. Yep. Um, high rye, which has notes of cinnamon and clove. Um, doesn't give the mask bill. It does not. Okay. Well, I'll look it up and I'll put it on the, uh, uh I'll put it in the, um, in the sidebar, but yeah, it's, it's drank very smooth. Uh, a little bit of a hug. Not that much. Yeah. I would say, what do you say? It's gotta be a low proof. Uh, it's 80, uh, 83 proof. Okay. Well, then it says it's a, a blend of straight rye whiskey. So it's okay. That explains um, quite a bit. Yep. So, all right. That was, uh, um, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. <coughs> so I would say, um, if I had to give that a score just off the cuff, uh, I'd give this a uh, high 70s. Yeah. Like a 78. Yep. That'd be me. What did you think? Yeah, I was thinking about 77, 75, okay. yeah. All right. Oh, this is more pronounced. This is more peppery. Yeah. Like a black pepper. What are we What are we trying here? This is Cincinnati distilling. Okay. Uh, the proof on this. Now, I'm not being a jackass when I sit there and say, where are they out of? I know they're out of freaking Cincinnati. Yeah. But Milford. what part? Milford, yep. Milford Ohio. Uh, this is uh, 90 proof. Okay. All right. This is like, it's a rye bread. Yeah. Um, may not be my cup of tea, but it's a rye bread. That's what I get out of it. But you don't like, get that. Like, I almost want like a salami right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, no burn, no. No. Uh, whatsoever. And again, I know the proof has a lot to do with it. Uh, but again, you don't have you don't have that sharpness right. uh, on the back end. Yeah, it's got that nice warm, warm yeah. hug to it. Yeah. 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 So, um, I might like this better than your all's bourbon. I'm just saying. Um, this this is a pretty good ride. Yeah, I, you know, actually, I've I've had the single barrel, and I think the single barrel is very good. Okay. Um, they do make, um, you know, if you uh, from the Southwest Ohio area, they get they got other uh, options. There's a Millcroft line of bourbons. Okay. Um, they're now making a Middletown bourbon. It's based on the uh, old Armco steel. Oh, they're the one that did that. They're the one that did that. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All so, right. Well, very good. All right, Jeff, what are we doing on C? Uh, C is the A.M. Scott's Rye Whiskey. Oh. This is um, Good. 100 proof. Good God, this freaking nose is awesome. Yeah. Um, they, I'm becoming a Scott A.M. Scott's fan. Yeah. Yes. Quick. Like, they're doing something right up there. Yeah, that is that is very good. A little bit more... Yeah. spice to it yeah but, but they also have other items going on in here it's not yeah. just rye no not sure what that might be but it's a nice blend age seven years okay it is barrel one 
bottle 11 of 144. Wow, okay. So definitely limited. Yeah. Uh, but there is no uh, no match bill on it. So is this something you get in the uh, gift store by chance? Yes. Uh, you can get this up at the A, uh, AM Scott's Distillery up in Troy, or I believe I've seen it at uh, like local liquor stores. I've okay. Seen it, like uh, Arrow, maybe. or. Okay. So, I mean, you locals here that uh, I watched this show that here in, in the tri-state area, uh, it may not be a bad drive to go up to Troy one day on a weekend. Uh, yeah. You can do that and. Uh, uh, there may be some honey barrels left, I doubt it. Um, but uh, the rye, the rye that, that, that is pretty good. Um, uh, I, I'm going to give you my, my opinion once we're done as far as uh, my, my, my rise in order. Okay. So, okay. All right. The last bottle we got here is the, as we said, the unicorn. Man, it smells like is, a bourbon. This is Penelope Takaji. Dude, this one smells like a rye. It's finished in Takaji wine casks. 106 proof. It's a Kaji. I gotta imagine it's a Japanese thing. Uh, it's a British thing, I believe. Oh, really? No, I should know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Preparing them with cast finest winemaking regions. Rich and decadent, this finish captures the late harvest notes of Takaji wine from Hungary. Once dubbed the wine of kings by so, the little, little, This little. What, what's it? Did you say wine barrels? Yes. Okay, it's a little grapey. Is it? Yes. It's good. Uh, this is, to me, less of a rye and more of a bourbon. I guess yeah. more I'm accustomed to. Right. Uh, I'm more of accustomed to, obviously, bourbon. Uh, this is, uh, I wouldn't know this is a rye if you told me. It drinks like a bourbon. It does. And that's a compliment. Yes. Because uh, I love bourbon. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, the finish is not as long as I'd like it to be. No, but man, could you imagine if it was? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be a 90s bourbon. Yeah. Um, but because of that, I'd give like a mid-80s. Yeah. And I, and I think this is like one of the the first bottles. Um, oh, I think this might be the 2024 release. I think there might have been another man. release last year. That is very good. But, yeah. it's It's almost impossible to find. Yeah, uh, well, I'm not going to ask. <laughs> um, it's about, on the secondary, it's about $140, $150 a bottle. Okay, what's it? Uh, uh, MSRP retail? is about 99 Okay, it's not marked up too bad. No, not bad. Okay, it was good. Uh, if you're telling me that's a rye, I will say that's one of the better ryes I've, I've definitely have tasted. Yeah. Um, I would say, ironically... I would probably, I'd probably do this right there. First, second, third, fourth. Now, and I'm not saying anything bad about this either because I think they're all good um, for rice. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain rice out there I, I just don't freaking like. Um, but these were not overpowering uh, to the point where, you know, it'd be, how much is this? Uh, it's like 50 bucks. That might be a little bit too expensive to do this, but man, this would be a good mixer. Yeah. I think any rye would be a good mixer, just because they'll be able to uh, punch through the uh, syrup and, and the cocktail part of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, I mean, Sazerac is, uh, that's, used yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, I rye. usually use Bullet. Yeah. Uh, I don't use Bullet rye, but I use Bullet. Uh, that's basically for my cocktails. Yeah. Um, but, um, and yeah. I, and I'm not ignoring you, I'm going to OHLQ no. to, uh, see what that is but i would say in this order uh this is kind of how i like it um cincinnati rye sagamore spirit 39.99 a bottle oh that's good for 40 o bucks ohlq that's that's great for 40 bucks yeah especially if you want to start out in rye right <clears throat> so all right so that's our blind um next i want to we want to talk about what happened last weekend yes we do uh in a 12 bottle blind i'm going to put it up right here on the sidebar if I can squeeze it up, I'm going to have to put it in two pages or three pages. But here's the lineup that we had, guys. We had Baker 7. Now, the premise was uh, each each person bringing their own bottle. Right. And there's actually a semi-competition to bring in the best bottle. Um, and whoever wins that, uh, when it was an agent or uh, uh, travel blinded flight or whatever it was. Right. It was nice. Yeah, little, uh, little uh, sample bottles that you can yeah, get. Yeah, it was very nice. So, these are the bottles that were brought in. Uh, Baker 7, 
That was you. Me. He really wanted to win. I did. I yeah, won. yeah, I can tell. When he bought it in that break of seven, I mean, <laughs> I'm like, I'm winning. <laughs> yeah. So another one is Knob Creek 9. So we got some familiar ones here. Uh, one fam unfamiliar one that we got was Brothers Bond um, Cast Strength. Um, yeah, I've I, seen it around, but I've this was a cast strength. So yeah, that was. I've never pulled. I've seen it and never pulled the trigger, but I think. And it, well, we'll go over it here. Yeah. But, uh, Bushwood. I have never heard of it. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it down at uh, uh, Party Source. Okay, the decanter of it. The bottle's oh, nice. Yeah. It's got a golf ball on it. it, it it's very nice. It's Caddyshack Bushwood yeah. Golf. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll try to put a picture up here on the screen. Yeah. Um, Old Forge Reserve. That was, uh, of, was one. That was out of Colorado. I think. Okay. Yeah, that was out of Colorado. Uh, Travers Whiskey, Traverse City Traverse Whiskey, City. Mm -hmm. and I've seen that on the uh, I've seen that on the uh, liquor stores. Yep. Uh, things of that nature. Blueprint was another one. Yeah, that one I had. I had the first time I ever saw it. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, someone bought. I don't know who did it. I bought. I brought old granddad uh, um, one fourteen. That would be Beth. Oh, she did. Yes. Good job, Beth. Um, yeah. That well, that's a classic. Yeah. Um, and we'll discuss the results here in a minute. Uh, Midwest uh, Distillery. Yeah, Midwest Spirits. Yeah. That I, I, another bottle I've been wanting to try. But yeah. Just never pulled the trigger. And see, th this is the beauty of it, right? So right. we would never try these bottles otherwise unless we have like a tasting like this, right? right? Yeah, it's like you know you go, you go to a bar and you want to yeah. you know, try something you never had before before you go out and spend a hundred dollars for a right. bottle. Right. Right. Not that that Midwest Spirits is a hundred dollars, but you you want to try it before you spend the money. Right. And this is a great opportunity to do that. And Midwest was was one that, like I said, yeah. I was wanting to try. Um, another one was Oak and Eden, uh, the wheat and honey version. Mm -hmm. uh, so they tried their stab on it, and we'll get the results here mm -hmm. in that in a minute. Uh, Northside uh, Distillery, uh, they had a vanilla finish, uh, okay. and, and like a uh, vanilla cast strength or something like that. And Northside's out of Cincinnati. Correct. Which, yep. by the way, we are going down on the seventeenth uh, to visit with those folks and. Do a little interview. Show. Yeah, we'll bring that back to you guys. Yep. Uh, it'll be an on-location interview, so hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have that here in a few weeks. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, Jack Daniels uh, Bonded Rye. Uh, that's interesting to bring a rye to a yeah. bourbon tasting because it's going to be distinct. Either it's going to go well or it's not going to go well. Very I mean, well. It, it did trick us. We, we, yes. There were several that we thought were the Jack yeah. Daniels and it yeah. wasn't. But So those were our 12-bottle lineup. Um before we, uh, well, let's go ahead and reveal the top four, and then, guys, you're going to be shocked to hear what the last one was. Yeah. So, number four, <laughs> um, the consensus, that's how we do we do my votes. Yeah, uh, the we, fourth, have, yeah we have these uh, yes. tasting sheets. If you haven't seen these, and we, we do three rounds of four. Yep. And then we select our favorite. Correct. Of our four favorites of the 12 or however many that we, yes. we tested or tasted. And then we blind those and then pick our favorite from that. And then usually there's a consensus. Yes. We haven't had a problem in doing that uh, mm -hmm. thus far. Usually there's a, there's a clear winner yep. and there was one on this one as well. There was, uh, it was tight, but there's a lot of, I think the first and second was locked down. It was. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, our fourth one was Bushwood. Uh, it came out of nowhere. It did. Uh, like I said, it's one of those ones I've seen on the shelf and would never, never picked it up. No, and thankfully it's blind. And now you think yeah, about it. Yeah, now I think about it. Next time I see it, it's like, oh, I'm gonna right. grab that. Oh yeah. Uh, third uh, was uh, Blueprint. Yeah, again, uh, another one I never Chase, saw. Chase brought that one, and yeah. uh, he brought it because the label, because it's just the label. Yeah, I mean it's a cool looking bottle, and it's yeah. just, it was, it was a very good. Yeah, smooth bourbon, and it's like I said, it just came out of nowhere, kind of like a magnolia, just kind of. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah, for sure. Now our second one, I'm gonna say that this was not too far behind the first one. Right. Uh, it, was, it was consistently second. Mm -hmm. Got a few, few first place votes, but it was consistently second or third in everybody's uh, right. top four. So, and that was Old Forge Reserve. Yeah. Uh, that that be that was our number two uh, bourbon of the night. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? I thought that was very good, and okay. it was it was one of my favorite four. Yeah. In fact, these top four were oh, my favorite. Oh, really? Well, I, no, I take that back. I did not have uh, Bushwood in my top four. Okay. I had my Baker Seven. Yeah. And I had Northside, and the um, uh, let's see what was that one there the uh, the Blueprint. Okay. And Old Forge. <clears throat> okay. And. <laughs> my Baker 7 came in last of my favorite. Well, the four, though. <laughs> yeah, of the four. Which is yeah. not bad. So. No, no. Because we had 12 bottles. Right. 
But uh, so that that finished the top twenty five percent. Yeah. Yep. Um. You know what my number one is before we reveal the number one overall. It was old granddad 114. You believe that? Yeah, I believe it. I mean, it's a, it's that a, was my number one for the price, the and I mean, it's great. Yeah, and that's a classic, and mm -hmm. it it stood up for me. Um, but anyway, so the number one bourbon, uh, the 12 bottle bourbon blind, uh, was uh, and, and this is not because of what's coming up in two no, <laughs> it's nothing to do with this. Right, it's, it's actually Northside who we're about to visit right. uh, next week, and they had nothing like you said. They had nothing to do with. The fact that we're visiting them, um, but as a north side, it had a vanilla cast finish, and man, that was good. It was very good. And I think the finish is what that did it for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's what won it for everybody. Yeah, it had a great nose. Yes, but I mean, all those top four right there had great noses. Right, but the finish on the north side was yeah. great. Very good. Yes, yeah. that was uh, uh, that was. Where is that bottle, by the way? Do we have that? Yes, it's got to be down do. there somewhere. That there north is. side. Yeah, it's right white. Right. Yep. Yeah, let's let's show that to the people uh, at home. Um, you can get that at Northside Distillery. Uh, this was our number one uh, bottle. Um, it won. Uh, they have a single barrel version Did as they? well. It's pretty good. Uh, but this one, um, this was uh, uh, Madagascar Vanilla Extract Cask Finish, hmm. single barrel. Uh, that, you know, that's another brand that I've I've seen on the shelf. Yeah. And just don't pull the trigger. I mean, it's like you look at it and go, oh, it's made in Cincinnati. Mm. Right. You, when it's yeah. local, you get kind of finicky about it. Right. Like, yeah, how it's still a Kentucky bourbon. Right. Um, but, oh, man, that's that was great. Yeah, you see how much we drank of that, too. Yeah. Um, and that's a brand-new bottle. That was, yeah. Um, and then, um, well, why don't you talk about our last one? Oh, my gosh. Tell, um, tell the people what happened. Uh, Do we have that? Oh, it's fine. No, they take we it don't. Um, I, I should yeah. he, he, he wanted it back. Well, the good news is it wasn't Jeff's bottle. Wasn't my bottle, thank God. Uh, so I'm no longer in the tank. Yeah, because you have brought two <laughs> bottles that uh, have not done so well. So, yeah, this, go ahead. This, was, this beats both those two bottles, and actually there's another one on our list here. that. This was awful. This Consen was like, the, consensus, oh, right? My God. Everybody, right? Everybody. Um, it was one of those dirty dish rag, dirty sock smell. Uh, just the flavor was just horrible. And the, and the, the thing that blows my mind it was an OHLQ pick. Yes, it was a store pick. A store pick. Uh, I just, I mean, Knob Creek Nine. Yes, single boy. barrel. Was dead horrible. last. It wasn't even close, guys. Like yeah. everybody had it on their last or not next to last. Some didn't even score it. Yeah, some they didn't just, even score it. It was that bad. It was that bad. I don't know what happened there. I don't know if they just they had to pick just a bad barrel. Or whatever. I've never remembered Knob Creek being no. that. I would never. But I would never think that. That's the risk you take on a single barrel. Yes. I mean, it, you can have a great barrel, and then yeah. you get the bone just. Oof. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was the shocker of the night. It was uh, the green barrel. Uh, I would say the winner bourbon of the evening, other than the north side. Once you bring that in the camera view, uh, for those who didn't see our live stream, it's the Copper Sky. The Copper Sky. Um, Ambriana um, cask finish, right? Cigar, cigar blend. Cigar blend. Yeah. To me, this is probably one of the best bourbons I've had in at least six months or not to a year. Yeah. Um, if my you like, God, that if, is so yeah, good. If you like that Ambriana flavor, you know, the, uh, a Rio and RD1, yeah. um, both, you know, great bourbons, but this blows them out of the water. This was... Fantastic. It's like a snickerdoodle. Yeah. Smells like a snicker, snickerdoodle. Tastes like a snickerdoodle. Yeah, you smell. It smells like somebody's baking cookies somewhere. Yeah, it is <laughs> fan freaking tasket. Fantastic, and thanks Chad for bringing that with us. I wish I could have back get a backup bottle. He was so so nice of yeah. to leave this bottle behind, uh, and I will uh, save that for a special occasion because that is one of my now all time favorite bourbons. Yeah, it, it's great. You know, and I, I love Penelope Rio, and that that. I want that bottle. <laughs> yeah, that is fantastic. Yeah. And that was another consensus for the night. So mm -hmm. what we do after we're done with the 12 ball, twelve bottle blinds, right? we then kind of set back, relax, mm -hmm. uh, cigars, stuff like that. But then we have uh, premium bottles where we kind of just, we don't score them. We just kind of relax and just taste yeah. them. And everybody gets an opportunity to taste, you know, some premium bottles they wouldn't have otherwise, right? Right. So we do some bottle sharing. Um, and um, a gentleman by the name of Chad, he brought that and. Good Lord, man. Yes. That just blew everybody away. Yep. 
You're the man, Chad. Yes, you are the man. (laughs) So, all right, so that does it for our rye blind uh, and also the results of the 12-bottle blind. Hope you enjoy Mm -hmm. those results. Uh, Next is our new and improved uh, balls report. Uh, So give us a second, and uh, we'll come back with that, okay? Yep. All right. Uh, Until then, we'll be right back. All right. All right, welcome back. I'm Jeff. I'm Charlie, and welcome to the Balls Report, the right? Balls Report, that's right. Okay, and uh, we want to, before we start off, we want to give a special shout out to Johnny Nice 45. He now has his own uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. He's so proud of himself. It's a few days old. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, go out there and please subscribe to him and support him. Uh, uh, he helps out with his show. Um, obviously, he does our Balls Report now. Uh, he is a guru when it comes. I mean, we, we know sports. Yeah, yeah. But he he's a little bit of a nerdy nerd. Yeah, I, um, I know football and some baseball. Yeah. But nothing really else. Right. So he <laughs> helps us that uh, with uh, getting this uh, balls report together. But uh, his hobby, just like ours, is bourbon. His is throwing knives. It's actually pretty good. I haven't checked it out. Okay. Yeah. So check that out, uh, Johnny Knives Forty Five. Uh, either on uh, YouTube. He has an Instagram channel, but I think he's going to move over to YouTube because he's getting uh, more of an exposure. So anyway, anyways, that being said, uh, why don't you start us off on the balls report? All right. Uh, we'll uh, start with the NFL. Well, actually, we'll start with the Kentucky Derby winner. Yes. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say it was – I guess he was favored, wasn't he? No. Eight, no, that, it was 18-1. That's to right, 18-1. to one. That's right. Yeah. And, our, and our, our buddy Bob uh, had, a, had a good day. So I'm, uh, I'm going to probably stop the video here, <laughs> and you guys are going to see it. I am going to show you with Bob's permission, which he, he did tell me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a video of Bob cheering on Mystic Dan because he that was his horse for the night. Yeah. He picked it. And one thing I didn't, I didn't say on the live stream, uh, he had told us, he reminded me on Saturday, had we watched, remember the last live stream, he said something on there yeah, saying he that, hey, if it rains, there's a good chance that Mr. Dan has a chance to uh, win. Now, granted, it was kind of drying up, the track was. Well, yeah, but they had a heck of a lot of rain the night before. Yeah, yeah. so, but uh, Bob was right. He was, and he did well. <laughs> yeah, he did very well. So, um, he's retired now. That's why he's not on the show anymore. Um, so, anyway, so, um, uh, Photo yeah. finish. That yeah, was, photo finish. Yeah. Um, right, go, Dan, go! Go! Mr. Dan, go! Mr. Dan, go! Watch the table, Bob. You're the table, Bob. He, he can't hear you. Dan, come on, Dan, go! Uh-oh, uh-oh. Come on, Dan, hold him! Hold him, go, Dan, go! Go, Dan, go! Oh, 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 oh. Holy shit! Woo! <laughs> okay, so uh, moving on to the NFL. Um, Travis Kelsey, uh, you can call him Trailer. Trailer, why? Travis and Taylor. Oh my God! I thought you were going to say like, <laughs> yeah. like Trailer Trash or something. Yeah, I, would, uh, I would have been okay with that. Yeah, but um, he did uh, become the uh, highest-paid tight end uh, okay. with his extension, uh, thirty-four and a half million dollars, I believe it was, but seventeen million of it guaranteed. Two-year uh, deal. Two-year deal. Twelve and a half million one year, and seventeen plus the following. And then, yeah. I, I get it. He deserves it. So, he, he, um, Yeah, he does. I mean, yeah. he is he's a hell of a tight end. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then uh, Brother Jason is uh, going to the booth with uh, ESPN. Oh, yeah? Doing yeah. what? Monday night? Um, he is, uh, just doesn't say. He just says he's going into the booth with ESPN. Uh, okay. I don't know if it's going to be a Monday night deal or if it's going to be uh, maybe on a Sunday well, night. Well, strike while the iron's hot, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then I think we mentioned this last week, but uh, Zeke Elliott, Elliott back to the Cowboys. Where did uh, Pollard go? Because obviously he's not on the roster anymore. Yeah. Um, they franchised him, and then yeah. he, he must have went something else. So we'll, uh, we'll list that up there. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just curious. But uh, All right, on to our next topic. Um, uh, oh, well, still sticking with the – well, with NFL, and we may go on a site on a tangent here. Yep. Uh, but uh, Tom Brady begins his career with Fox. Now we're going to stop right there because yeah. if you all watch that Netflix special on Sunday, yeah, that was great. That was that was great, and, and that was a long ass roast. It, it was, and Tom wasn't too happy in a few spots. No, but you got to understand that when you put yourself in that position. True. Yeah, you're. They're, they're yeah. going to dig into your past, and they're going to make fun of you, and yeah, uh, they're going to go after your marriage and. 
yeah. um, things of that nature. Nothing's, nothing's out of bounds, right? Right. And, you know, there was, I guess, some comments made about Robert Kraft and um, a hot mic situation, I guess. Tom Brady said, got up and said, keep saying something or say something else. Keep talking about it or something threatening. He wasn't happy about Oh, really? It. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of funny. All right. Well, there was one uh, <laughs> where uh, Tom Brady was talking about... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Peyton Manning, did you get that one? I did not see that. He was one. saying that uh, he lives in uh, Denver sometimes, or he lives in Louisiana sometimes. But one thing is that he'll always live in my shadow. <laughs> I did not, that was not pretty catch good. that. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Uh, so that was good, bros. If you guys catch it on Netflix. Uh, but anyway, so I just wanted to mention that. Yep, and then uh, the post-draft power rankings, uh, they're on NFL.com. Uh, I think they had uh, the Commanders at number one and Steelers number two. Shit, God. It's because it, oh, my God. I think it was the last I saw. Yeah, you're probably, I don't, I don't. The Commanders is yet to be seen because, again, I, I, may, I, I will always make this argument. You may draft great players, but if you don't have a good organization, you will burn them to the ground. Right. And it doesn't matter who you got. Um, How many numbers? Because well, I, I would argue Redskins themselves did that. They're Griffin. They did. Robert Griffin. Right. He was a great player, and man, they ran him to the ground. Yep. If you don't have an offensive line to protect yeah. your your guy, then Joe Burrow. I mean, look right. at that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know. Um, so yeah. So anyways, just you know. Uh, how how many on. number one quarterbacks have are. Have done well. Not many. not many. Not many because their lines it sucks. Right, they're they're on a, one of the worst you teams. In you the don't want to be the one. You one actually one don't want to be a number one pick. No, you don't. Because they're 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 uh, number one in the draft for a reason. Right, Joe Burrow was Cincinnati's number one pick. Yeah, and he's hurt. And he's hurt, and he's yeah. he was throwing today. They I, I did, saw that. Yeah, you know, that's the first time I've seen him not fist bump somebody and shake hands. He was actually yeah. throwing the ball, so we'll see okay. how that goes. All right, very good. Uh, let's see. Uh, so moving on to uh, baseball. Yeah, um, what we got? Them Reds are just stinking it up. Yeah, they've lost the last four games now. Yep, they just got um, swept by the Padres. The key thing is not too much of it at all. Yeah. Um, but let's see if they can dig themselves out. Um, Ella, de, Ella de Cruz um, in April, he is the first person uh, with at least... Uh, eight home runs and 17 stolen bases in a calendar month yeah. since uh, 1901. He's only 22 years old. Good God. He met, well, enjoy him while you can, guys. Right. Because he's those... not meant for this market. He'll be yeah. going to the Yankees. That's, yeah, that's, that's the that's sad part. That's unfortunate. Yeah, that's yep. the sad part. Reds uh, don't have the, the, the resources right. to, to pay that. He'll be a Yankee or a Dodger. <laughs> yeah, or a Dodger. Sh- Shohei, good God. Oh, gosh. That dude on the tear. He's yeah. like he's... Damn, he's so good. He's either really pissed off his yes. translator. Or... Good God. But uh, speaking about other clubs or just MLB in, in, in general, um, their attendance of twenty uh, almost 27,000 is the largest figure uh, since 2017. Wow. So people, baseball is back. It appears to be, yeah. That's, I don't know. For some reason, I'm not. I, I'm not so much either. I, you know, Since the years ago, was it in the 90s, the strike? You know, okay. that kind of just killed me with baseball. Okay. I'll follow it every now and then. But, um, well, COVID killed it for me because I went on to other things. Yeah. Uh, and then that's where I picked up FC Cincinnati soccer. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, so that that being said. Well, speaking of FC Cincinnati, who was it just had their jaw broke? Oh, oh uh, uh, Bupenza. Yeah. I'm actually, bar not, fight. I'm actually not uh, too... Uh, disappointed in that. Aren't you? Okay. I can I didn't like Bupens at the beginning with so he's a hot head and um you know I'm not surprised. I'm surprised but not surprised but um I, I think we're actually a better team without him. I'm mm. just saying. Yeah I'm I'm not much of a soccer person myself okay. but um he is like he's a me guy. Is he? Yeah he he's a me guy and uh when you see him play he's not much of a finesse player and he thinks he can score a goal from thirty yards and he can't <laughs> Um, but no, I'm, I'm okay with that one. Yeah. So, okay. All right. So, um, I guess another subject topic that, uh, Johnny Nye's brought up that apparently there's a lot of bench clearing brawls this yeah. year. Yep. So it reminds us as far as what is your favorite bench clearing brawls? I have mine. I have two of them. Oh my gosh. My, <sighs> my number one favorite is Nolan Ryan for you oldies. Nolan Ryan <laughs> uh, and Robin Ventura and he had him in that headlock and it's just pounding on him. Yeah. Um, oh gosh. And my other one was uh, Kyle Farnworth and Paul Wilson, or the Reds. 
You gotta look these things up Paul on YouTube. Oh, he yeah. got his ass kicked. Yes. Yep. And who was the Boston Red Sox pitcher? The uh, oh, Chilling? No. The rock. They call him the Rocket. Oh, Roger Clemens. Roger Clemens. Yeah. There was he. There. I remember seeing a bench clearing because he okay. beamed somebody. Okay. I think somebody hit a home run. The next batter, he beamed him. And oh, okay. Shot. All right. <laughs> remember when he did that uh, at uh, Piazza? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, he threw like the broken bat yeah. towards him and all that shit. Yep. Um, but yeah, that uh, that's some good ones. And uh, remember uh, the Johnny Cueto fight? I do. Yep. That was pretty good. That was. Um, and then who was that left-handed pitcher the Reds had? And he went straight into the Pittsburgh dugout. He didn't even wait for anybody. He's oh a left-handed reliever. You guys uh, know who yeah, it is. I don't remember. He went yeah. straight. He handed the glove to the pitching glove. Like, <laughs> I'll be back. And he freaking just went straight into the Pittsburgh bullpen. Yeah, He's I don't like, remember that. Oh, it was great. <clears throat> so anyways. But, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of this year's kind of crap, and even started last year's, a lot of these umpires are causing a lot of animosity oh, really? between a lot of players. And, <clears throat> and just uh, – They don't call it they're not calling. They're not calling balls and strikes evenly. Okay. Um, okay. The whole pitch clock thing, the whole interference okay. thing, it's all just, it's getting crazy. Okay, all right. Well, uh, ne- going on to the next subject is that um, college football, um, Georgia's uh, Kirby Smart. Yeah, yeah, a uh, new 10-year, $130 million deal. It's going to be the highest paid coach. Like in all of it, it, Yeah, yeah, in all, in all of college. Fo- yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's got the program behind it. He does, and he's got another number one ranked team coming out. Yeah, next I year. mean, he's the new uh, Nick Saban. Yeah, and of course, he's a disciple. True. Of yeah. Nick Saban too. Right. So, I mean, he comes from that same that uh, family, yeah, same yeah. breed, and um, down there they grow him pretty big anyway. So, I'm yep. sure he gets a lot of he gets a lot of recruiting in state, and he can beat boys. everybody just by yeah. Georgia players. Right. Uh, but for it, <clears throat> he's in a pretty sweet spot. Yes, he is, and he deserves every penny of it. He does. <clears throat> I'm just so, not a Georgia fan. <laughs> no, I'm not a Georgia fan either, but, um, you know, I know a lot of people will make the debate as far as people are overpaid on that kind of stuff. My thing is the money's going to go somewhere. Either it's going to steal with the owners right, or the universities, or right. it's going to go to the uh, coach who brought them the prominence. So I do not have a problem on, on a lot of these players, professionally or college, get paid what they get paid. Right. Because, uh, in my mind, it's... Because of them is where they're at, not because right. of the ownership. Yeah, you know, especially on the on the player side. I mean, <clears throat> the NCAA is making money hand over fist yeah. on these on these players. Yeah. And you know, I was I'm kind of salty about it too because I mean, I played and I didn't see anything. Where'd you, play I was, Where'd you play at? I actually played Morehead State down in Kentucky. Oh, nice. Yep. Um, I wasn't good enough to get paid. <laughs> but, no, uh, but it'd been nice if NIL was back then. It would. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so, it would have been nice. Okay. All right. Well, you know what, guys? That does it for the Balls Report. Uh, again, courtesy of uh, Johnny Knives. And we'll see what he has in storage with us next week. Yeah. Uh, we do We do appreciate that. Uh, follow him on uh, on YouTube at Johnny Knives 45 We did forget one thing. Uh, yes, Odell sir. Beckham to the Dolphins. Oh, my God. $3 million, too. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, far cry from the 15 he got from Baltimore. I know. I know. <laughs> so, if we didn't say it already... Um, I don't know if I we oh yeah we did welcome you at the beginning of the show yeah um, but yeah. again uh, we we do enjoy having you here uh, it's always good to have somebody else to bring a different perspective so yep. uh, you're no longer Phil I'll put Jeff <laughs> on the bottom now yeah uh, we know all we no longer uh, can put that on him but uh, <laughs> anyway so I hope you guys uh, catch our live stream right yes that was fun it was it was it was a good show yeah so uh, all right so hopefully you like this rye thing and in a few weeks we'll have another rye blind actually. Uh, But until then, uh, I'm Charlie. And I'm Jeff. All right, we'll see you next time. See you.